Uh, well, what's up, guys? It's the live quarter cast. If you are watching this on YouTube, well, uh, it's not live. <laughs> but if you're interested, we're doing live podcasts these days. The quarter cast is happening live on the quarterdigital.com website. It's the morning. Um, we got yeah. Jordan, we got Nico, we got myself. What's up, we everybody? Got Christian, what up, what up? Who's, who's running the show? He's the puppet master. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> puppet master Christian. Yes, sir. Uh, today's a very exciting day. I was very excited to get to the studio today because oh, yeah. um, my crime detection software is, uh, I mean, I feel like I'm about to get a government contract. <laughs> In fact, if I go down this path any further, it's, I think it's feasible. I, fe I think it's feasible that I could get my first government contract for security services. Um, it, it truly is. So what's this project that you're working on? Yes. So we're talking about this. I can't fully describe it to everyone because some people in this room may still be participants in a, mm -hmm. what I call a social experiment. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, we have software that can detect weapons. Um, basically, uh, we, you know, we were talking about this robot video and other Boston Dynamics video, and it got me thinking about like actual real life AI vision. And now over there in the studio floor, we have this thing. Uh, it's a, it's based off of a whatever a, a model or a algorithm called YOLO V8. You you only look once. That's why it's called YOLO. <laughs> but basically, it's just it's real time AI detection software. So just like you do like an image in stable diffusion, it gives you an explanation of what it sees. It's that, but live real time every frame, and uh, you can train it on anything you want. And so. Uh, I've trained up a model that literally will detect if it sees a weapon in, in the frame of the shot. Mm. And like for me, I'm totally blown away. I'm sure uh, this is actually something that's probably pretty commonplace at this point. You yeah, know, I'm sure like, about, like to other every stadium, is, public yeah. area, casino. <laughs> everyone, casinos, like <laughs> yeah. everyone's probably running the software right now. But I think it's kind of funny because I got it to work not by knowing how to code, but by using AI to code the scripts for me. <laughs> and then I still had to learn a rudimentary understanding of like how to just like load the scripts and ha some of the general syntax. But for all the heavy lifting, yeah, it's off my shoulders. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. There's been a, a, a little bit of a, a revolution happening in the past like two or three months here at Corridor uh, with, with basically Claude 3.5, which is like, so there's uh, OpenAI, which makes ChatGPT. Everybody's familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of the people that w used to work at OpenAI started their own company called Anthropic. And they started making effectively a, a clone of ChatGPT. Um, and their newest version, which is called, well, the overall offering is Claude. The specific Claude. model is Sonnet 3.5. Their naming conventions suck. <laughs> <laughs> so they haven't figured it out yet. Pros. <laughs> because Limerick 4.5. Because there's, <laughs> there's Opus, there's Sonnet, and there's Haiku. And those are the three Haiku. sizes. Oh, okay. and, Haiku. All, and the currently only Sonnet is on version 3.5. Just going to throw it out there personally, 3. Haiku overrated. <laughs> does, it, I, does it rhyme? You know I also agree with you. No <laughs> pattern. Oh, you're saying haikus in general are overrated. Yeah, and yeah. Like what's fun? What's fun often. about a haiku? Truly, it's, <laughs> it's a symbolic challenge. It's like this. It's like the rhythm of like dropping a bunch of stuff on the floor. <laughs> Man, we should have written that critique in haiku. That would have been like the best. Like, <laughs> all right. Anyways, what you were saying we're talking about <laughs> this. The competitor to oh, the OpenAI yeah. GPT offshoot. So they had you know OpenAI had GPT four. I didn't really like how OpenAI was like actively regulating to try shut down like like open source ai because it's a competitor to them and so i you know i didn't want to pay for them and support them and then uh claude comes out and anthropic's trying to be competitive so they're just like whatever we'll give our best model for free here you go and so oh okay i mean like they didn't give the model itself out but you can use it like chat gpt but you can use it for free um and you can use it a lot more than you can use chat gpt for free and, and it's really good and it's really good and it's actually better than good it's fast Mm -hmm. It gives you an answer at the same like speed as like a person in a conversation. Like it's not like a uh, here's my question. And then it's like oh, chat GPD normally sits there and thinks for a little bit. But with Claude, you're like, here's my uh, question. And then it's just like before you're like finger has released the enter <laughs> key. It starts going. And I love that. Yeah. But what is the difference between so the offerings, I guess? 
Well, part of it's accessibility. Uh, Claude is easy to use. But another thing that they did kind of emphasize when they trained Claude, and everybody's like constantly updating their models, but they like uh, a large language model can only think one word at a time. It's always predicting the next word. And so if you want something to kind of like break things down and reason and like figure it out, you know, usually you don't want to have to read all that stuff, but in a large language model has to write that stuff for it to actually arrive at a good conclusion. Like if you tell ChatGPT to be brief, it's going to give you worse results because you're killing oh. its way of thinking because it thinks one word at a time. So you're saying like only answer with one word, you know, answers. It's like, well, now I can't figure anything out. It can't write out its own logic. So they kind of trained this chain of thought reasoning into how Claude responds. So when you ask it for help on something, it starts listing things out step by step. And you kind of know how a large language model works and you kind of work with it. You can get really powerful results. Wait, so are like, you saying if it doesn't show its work, it's not doing that work? Exactly. Oh, interesting. Yep. Because it only like it only predicts the next word. So it can't predict what the next word after that might be because I'm like predict one word at a time. Mm. And so when it writes Wait, are things you serious? out. I want, I, want to, I want to try this. I'm... <laughs> well, so that, I had a little discovery a few weeks ago. So I have this idea for a special effects device that I want to make. And, you know, we do a lot of airsoft guns. We do comp our muzzle flashes in post. And the thing that really sells the muzzle flash is the actual brightness of it. And if you had this big bright thing in the frame, well, you know, if it's fake, you have to then go in and add all the light from it manually. You know, you kind of pick stuff and rotoscope oh, yeah. stuff and brighten it. And it it looks okay, but like it never looks as good as the real thing. And especially if you're like in a really dark room, then it's almost impossible to actually fake it. Well, because those shadows. Right. I mean, all the shadows cast by the body and whatever don't get illuminated at all. You're just raising the brightness. Exactly. Universally. Like <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, you can try to fake it, but yeah, stuff. exactly. And so like, remember in equilibrium when christian bale does the backflip and then he shoots all the guys in between like he's in the center like pew, 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 pew. so they had all the squibs wired up to the pistols every time he pulled the trigger and the gun went off the squib would go off so it was all synchronized based on his action which is super cool and I, i've always wanted to make a device that works like that but triggers lights because you know squibs is awesome but like if i can just trigger lights i can add a spark and i can add a muzzle flash and stuff mm -hmm. like that and it seems like it would be a doable thing. Like, I guess people use like Arduinos to like program LEDs and make little robots and stuff. But I didn't really know where to start. I've never really looked into it. But like a few weeks ago. Mm. What? Continue. I just I, <laughs> I just had another idea on how you can make this better. Because I would say I would. I mean, I know you're, we're, we're talking about this, but the goal is not to make specialized hardware, right? Well, hold on. Let me, let me just finish this up. Kind of. Yes. So anyways, where I'm, where I'm going with the story is that one night, it was like a Sunday night. I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about this thing a lot. You know, I, maybe I need to call people and like build it out. It might take me a few weeks to figure it out. Let me just see if Claude, you know, like it's at the top of all these leaderboards, right? It's 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 getting the best scores on all these all these things. And I'm I've heard that large language models are really good at helping you program and helping you code, especially if you just write in English. I'm like, maybe Claude can help me figure this out. And I I kind of just write a basic introduction of like, I'm trying to solve this. I build this thing. It's an idea for this. Could you help me build it? Should I use an Arduino? And like, that's all I asked. And they go like, yes, here's all the specifications if I understand you correctly. And here's what I roughly would, you know, uh, here's what I roughly would recommend you use if you're using an Arduino. Are these specifications correct? Are there anything else? Are there any other things you might want to add before you continue? And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, it just takes my hand. And I'm like, okay, well, I would actually like to do this. And, you know, I already have lights. They use something called DMX. I don't really know how it works but I don't need to build my own lights. Can we make that work? And it's like, oh yes, you'll actually want to do this and you'll want to use this and you'll want to buy these parts. And here I've taken the liberty of writing a script for you that you will load onto the Arduino that will interact with all these parts to correctly make your thing work. It's pretty crazy. And here's the step-by-step -step instructions on how to build it. And I'm just like, yeah. holy crap. Well, yeah, my, my first thought <laughs> when I hear sweet. that is that sounds awesome. Yeah. If it works. If it works. Because it works. I've seen the false exactly. confidence so much right. with exactly. the language models that I'm like, if you go down that path, you start buying all these pieces and you start putting it together and it's like, oh, well, it kind of just filled in the gaps. Yep. Like, how, do, how do we know that that's going to work? Well, I'll find out today because the pieces are arriving today and I'll start yeah. building it. But, well, the, so, but so Sam has a little bit of a further. So, so he's you're, you're going a little <laughs> more start to finish. And yeah. I'm like more in the middle with my experience using it because with that detection software, it's like I didn't necessarily start using like an AI to like I wasn't like, hey, AI, how do I detect people? You know, I was just like research, doing a little research just on my own, you know, some Googling, watching a YouTube video or two, reading a, some stuff or two on some websites. I was like, okay, I'm boiling it down to like these two different paths. And then once I lock onto that, I'm like, hey, how do I actually like write a script 
that would implement like a basic feature of this AI model or even this uh, other one called OpenCV, which has been around for like a few decades. But, um, you know, when you see, have you seen those probably those videos where it's like, I built a robot that shines a laser in my eye. Yeah. You know, it's like that's using OpenCV because OpenCV is basically a, Open a real it's, it's a real time like vision framework that's not necessarily AI based. It's like algorithm based where it's like instead of recognizing uh, the shape of a human, it's actually recognizing like the shape of gradients in an image that would potentially be a human like subject. Hmm. So it's like it's a very so it's I would say it's more kind of primitive, but at the same time, it's insanely complex, actually. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so basically, you know, I'm just using it at that intermediate intermediary of like, look, I don't know what the code type to say, hey, run a basic functionality of whatever the heck this thing does. And mm -hmm. it just goes, like, OK, here, open your webcam, run the model, and then we're going to just display whatever the model is spitting out when it gets your webcam feed. And then you go from there, basically. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, oh, OK, I see. I understand what we're doing now. I mean, I know what this can do. I know what it looks like. And then from there, you can just like go ham and say, hey, make it Terminator style. And it like <laughs> tries to get creative and like add scan lines. It's like, oh, ter but that's the crazy part where I'm like, <laughs> yeah. make it Terminator style. And then it like added this scan line and a crosshair in there. And I'm like, that's crazy because that now like this is the original promise of like these AI things. But it like, also sounds like it used some reason because yeah. the Terminator, I mean, like I just deduced that it was the movie and then identified yeah, the aesthetic model. of the movie. Well, it, but like, yeah. somehow made a visualization from a text model. Yeah. Well, not even the visualization, but it's like I'm sure someone somewhere some just something has described what Terminator vision looks like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't or maybe there's an image that somehow got trained on. But then it took that and translated that into code. It's not even necessarily like open AI. Okay. It's not, it's so not like stable diffusion. Somebody described it. That's most likely what mm. happened. Yeah, and it's, but it's not even stable diffusion where it's like, oh, I'll just try and make a replicate the pattern that I once saw somewhere. Um, but it's like, no, I'm going to like code the scan <laughs> line. I'm coding the red tint. I'm coding the crosshairs. I'm coding like the text at the bottom that says scanning dot 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 and repeating itself, you know. There's that's actually that's the crazy shit to me. You're describing actually a reasoning experiment that Microsoft did when they wanted when they did an academic paper on whether or not these uh, large language models could actually reason. And one of the things they did is they said, OK, use this math language that basically just renders shapes and program code a picture of a unicorn. And so ChatGPT spits out code. They run it and you get a general like oval and like legs, you know, four like rectangles for legs and like another circle for the head or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And so like, okay, so somehow this machine is taking, you know, text. And this is like when it was only text. There was no image processing in it. It's like it's taking the text description. It's turning that into a geometric representation and making an image and somehow under, like perhaps understanding what that image represents. But they're like, let's test it now. Let's tell it to change a detail in the image based on image descriptors. And it said, said basically like, take the head and add a hat and make the hat blue. Yeah. Something like that. So now it needs to understand its own image representation as mm -hmm. opposed to just like a description of something. And it did it. And it didn't do like the greatest job of it, but it still kind of did it. And that's one of those things where it's like, okay, mm -hmm. there is something, a little spark of something deep inside there. Yeah. And especially if you know how to like work with it, you can pull it out. Yeah. And like NeoRev in the chat's like, hey, someone's got a code claw to interface with other programs like Unreal or Houdini. That Speaking turns of, out, <laughs> actually, it's I haven't done that, but I'm pretty sure it can because Unreal is like a lot of like C plus kind of code. Yeah. And like, for instance, when you're in Unreal and you have that like big blueprint chart and mm -hmm. like there are all these nodes, when you select them all and hit copy and then paste it, it pastes the code version of the yeah. stuff. And so mm. I've never tried going backwards of just pasting code into that window, but I'm like, I'm 99% sure it's going to be super easy to figure that out. And even yeah. with like Houdini. There's like a there's a terminal window, right? There's like there's a, a terminal window. Yeah, it, it interfaces with Python very well. And, so then there and there's also the Vex uh, expression language, which is what I typically use. And again, I'm like a baby with coding. I never grew up with coding. You should try like that. that, though. You so should try yeah. literally just saying well, you should just try like just generating whatever the heck you can and pasting in there and just see what happens, because I think you could get some insanely complicated stuff running using that. Well, that's the thing. I, I generated a very simple one. Mm -hmm. um just to test it out and i ran through it myself and i was like no this is this is spot on okay 
Um, so I'm gonna start testing it hopefully this morning a little bit. I got a got a bit of free time because yeah. the potential of that. I mean, really, Houdini, the magic unlocks fully, fully when you can code, right? Because uh, then you are literally a, a master of any yeah. domain. Well, you, you always talk about how it's such a pain to like get started in every time in Houdini with a new project. Yeah. Unlike Unreal, where it's like, here, let me just load up a video game engine with everything pre coded, and I just need to swap assets. At a mm -hmm. certain point, it's like with Houdini, it's the same thing with 3ds Max right now. It's like, okay, square one, blank canvas every yep. time. It's like, oh yeah, and you know. If, even though like all this AI stuff is moving fast at the end of the day, it still only kind of moves at the speed of people. And like we, it takes time for us to learn. Right. And just yesterday you're like, wait, Vex scripts, it can write Vex scripts. Yeah. It's like, yeah. 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 It's like, what could you do with that? Like it can't do complicated stuff, but can you just have it do that first step of setting up the scene? Can you have yeah. it drop in a sun, a sky, a plane, a camera? Can you just like, you know, get assemble a universe for me, do these basic things. Or even like long if statements or something. Like if I'm like, right. oh, I'd love to set up constraints for this building collapse. But hey, if it's identified as a window, then make it this strong. And if it's this, if it's that, and then oh, I mean, just yeah. literally construct that. And then with my rudimentary knowledge of Vex and all that stuff, I can go in there and actually tweak. Yeah. The tweaking, I don't mind. It's the it's the nailing the syntax for complex longer scripts that still is like, uh, you know, it's a work in progress, but if Claude can handle it, I mean, yeah. I would adore that. Well, because that's the thing I found too. It's like the the biggest like weakness of a lot of like visual effects is sometimes when you get into that area of like systems like this, where you're like, I can model a building, so to speak, but I can't necessarily like, there's not like a feature or a modifier or an option to start handling these complex relationships and these complex like order of operations that you want to see happen if it's going to be like physics or something animated. And that's that's yeah, that's really where I find it to be super useful at this point now where it's mm. like, OK, I can like describe this complex system of relationships, but I can't necessarily program it myself. But I now have that tool available. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty freaking sweet. And I mean, like this isn't I mean, to a lot of people, I'm sure this is kind of like old news. You know, people, lots of developers have been like using this stuff to like code for them, you know, on the side. Yeah, but it's like it's one thing to like read about it and like mess with it. It's another thing to like actually use it mm -hmm. on your job and have it make something happen. And you're like, oh, it's pretty cool. It's like, oh, this is actually it did something. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't seeing, just theoretical. Well, seeing that it is working for you, Sam, is like a huge. <clears throat> yeah, because like I'm my optimism, kinda, you know, like compared to most people, like, I, just, my IQ is so low and it's just kind of a miracle that I. <laughs> Thank, but thank you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, no, it's sweet. I'm really excited. Like I was talking to it like uh, now that I've got like this visual thing working, I can like I could I can do the dishes thing where it's like a camera over the sink and I can have it. That, I can literally just say, hey, by the way, I've got a camera feed over the sink. You know, each time a person walks into the shop with a dish leaves and then leaves the dish there for more than, say, five minutes. I can say they didn't do their dishes <laughs> and then I'll send an alert to Twitter that shows a, a, a snapshot of their face. That's good. And publicly posts that. That's good. <laughs> and you I know, feel like that'd be great. Everyone can kind of be in on the game there. Now you, you should know? do it with, with putting gear away. Ooh. That's the oh, real one. Oh man. Well, I mean, I, we could have like studio right. wide face surveillance. But right I got to train this model on stuff and the amount of like camera gear we have, like the amount of parts. Like yeah, if it yeah, would work. Dishes is already got data sets for dishes. It's already right? got it's already got the dishes in there. I think that's a good <laughs> proof of concept before we move into camera gear. Mm, fair. Although I think we would have to paint the whole studio white so you can see clear silhouettes of everything. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have an interesting use case scenario with AI. Uh, this past week, totally different though, not large language model based. So I went camping up in Quetico, uh, which is like a wilderness park up in Canada, and. I'd been wanting to play Dungeons and Dragons up there for the longest time because you have a lot of off time just kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. And like I usually go with my dad, my cousins and my uncles and none of them had ever played. And so I brought the D&D starter kit. I was like, would you guys want to try it? They're like, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Mm. And so we went up there and I, you know, I prepped the game and I brought my iPad up and I brought a little solar panel so I could keep my iPad charged up there <laughs> because the manual has all the maps, but they're just little printed pictures in the manual. And so I would take pictures of the maps with my iPad and then I, there's a, an app for the iPad that lets you put tokens over an image like that. And so I just blow it up to be the size of the iPad screen. And we'd have our little character tokens that we'd move around. And that's how I did the Dungeons and Dragons maps out in the Boundary Waters. But all the tokens just had like letters. And so there's actually an app I found that lets you run 
stable diffusion on the iPad. So out in the boundary waters, I created like uh, portraits for everybody's characters and the that's scenes so and all like all the stuff for the game Whoa, so i can funny. show them pictures of what's happening <laughs> like, what's going on dude that's awesome that's incredible yeah, that's without any internet without any electricity for like a week oh that's so, beautiful yeah there you go remote wilderness ai usage is right there i also have never played dungeons and dragons before. really that's, yeah oh you'd have never. a great time i've gotten you i've gotten close a, a few times mm -hmm. but it never it never panned out for me yeah, well, it sounds suspicious. The single player <laughs> version that we did a while ago. Uh, oh, that's true. That's the closest. That I've is the that it's that. But yeah, when when there's more people in the mix, it's a little bit more. Do fun. you tend to live longer? Because for those of you who didn't see it, I played single player with with Sam, and I was dead and naked pretty quick. <laughs> I don't really know what has a blur, but I didn't. <laughs> So here we go. Go. You wake up naked fear. in a dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I try and escape. Door's locked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 great. That's good. Oh. I, I haven't played in like two years, and I'm like getting antsy, considering we have this like basically a, like a like a CIA warehouse full of <laughs> like miniatures now. Where'd that table go? You know, t table heaven. Table heaven. Oh rip. But don't worry. Don't worry. That's pretty cool. <laughs> don't you worry. Don't you worry. Well, now we've got That's Nico's new friggin' stable diffusion Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. There Both you go. the tables are in table heaven. <sighs> Even the first one that was all wobbly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gone too soon. Yep. Gone too soon. Hey, you just went to the Grand Canyon, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of wilderness. <laughs> speaking yeah, of wilderness. Yeah, we went out there. We, we, we talked a, a little bit about it last week, just as far as the whole camping experience and whatnot. But uh, as far as the trip itself, yeah, we went out for three days total. We basically drove up on a Monday, did all of our filming on a Tuesday, and then drove back on a Wednesday um, and, and stole some filming locations on the way back, too. Uh, nice. But it was, it was a, a real treat, man. The Grand Canyon, if you haven't seen it, it's like, it's cra you really can't conceptualize how big that is. But the idea for the video is basically, you know, I, and we can calculate this in a much simpler way, but it's more fun visually of how fast would you need to go or drive rather to jump the widest portion of the Grand Canyon? Mm. Yeah, Evil Knievel's son technically jumped the Grand Canyon, but he he jumped the smallest gap. I think it was like 600 feet or something like that. Still pretty crazy. And my, you know, my thesis is just- He jumped if, 600 feet? I think it was a 600 foot gap. I could be wrong about that. Wait, 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 wait. But how, f that's like very far. That's like two football fields. Um, Ramps. <laughs> Ramps and speed. Ramps and speed. You know, uh, I don't even know so if he landed. Far. Yeah, let's pull it up. Actually, I think it was a six hundred. I could be wrong. I want to make sure I'm right about Robbie that. Robbie Knievel. Robbie Knievel. But I okay. So I also saw that he maybe didn't land it. He landed, but then he, he started swiveling and it cut the video. I saw. No, he wiped. I don't know if he wiped or not, but I still count that as landing. Can, can you I mean, if you I made it across and you're alive, congratulations, you've won. Yeah, he he. Oh yeah, right he there. got yeah, yeah, he biffs at the end there. He ragged all pretty hard. They but the they the, did not give me enough uh, <laughs> run out on that jump, did they? Yeah, I think I remember reading like broke his collarbone and a few ribs. Rip. He made it, buddy. Look at that. Definitely got. I mean, that's thrashed. so that's so baller. Definitely got a little thrashed. <laughs> Man, crazy jump though. Holy shit! It feels like it's not six hundred feet though. Whoa! Ooh, ouch. Oh Ooh. wow! With the hay bales. Right into the hay. Ugh. Yeah. It's like, all right, great. The hay worked. Wait, that was six hundred feet. Is it? I, you know, I, that I'd did love not to look confirm. like six hundred feet. In fact, that I didn't. That, that doesn't look like six hundred feet to me either. That's the Grand Canyon. You know, never trust Dean. Dean told me this. Uh, regardless, the, the widest part of the Grand Canyon, the part that really humanity needs to jump in order to beat the Grand Canyon, is eighteen miles. Mm. Eighteen miles. Wow. That is so crazy. And when you're actually looking across it, and you're seeing the atmosphere just pick up, and it gets further and further away, it really does you know, put it into context how insanely far that is. So yeah, the the entire thing, oh, 600 feet deep, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe? I mean, that Who looked knows? like, that looks like if this is the Grand Canyon, they the part they jumped was like one of the little, little squiggles that was yeah, to the side. Yeah, it's like when it just started, like the canyon yeah. just started forming. Or it's like just a little crack yeah. off, the, off to the side they jumped. So albeit it's it's an intense thing to do, but it's still like, did you really jump the Grand Canyon? The grandest just the part? Edge of, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so I want to know the speed that it would take to jump the grandest part of the Grand Canyon. Grandest so part of the Grand Canyon. So we figured, we figured we'd drive out there to do it. And we got some awesome footage as a result. But, um, you know, I don't like, I don't like the uh, attention you get 
when you're in a like a touristy area and you're in an evil Knievel costume and you're really out there performing. It gets a little uncomfortable. Wait, you were wearing an evil Knievel costume? Yes. Oh wow, everyone's yeah. like getting like tense. Uh, yeah, and like and people anxious. would just come up and then just like watch you. And it's just like the three of us trying it's to like film a, a stupid bit. And when it's you, like, oh. when are you gonna jump? Yeah, are you gonna do it? <laughs> you gonna, gonna do, do it? it? <laughs> um, so we we snuck off into the into the the wilderness a little bit for the the last part where it gets really crazy, and uh, hmm. and we we were quite a ways out. And I remember hearing oh there we someone go sorry approaching. pause fast two hundred twenty eight feet that's what oh two twenty eight okay thank you so much yeah boy Dre that's still that's still pretty good still pretty good I mean it really gutsy to do that um, you're saying no but as we're filming the last portion where I really got to start screaming it gets a bit intense we we kind of snuck off the trail and I thought Ooh. we were far enough away but as we're going as we're just I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. We, we take a little break. And then I start to hear footsteps approaching, a group of people having a conversation. And as they get close, we were going to run again because we're running out of daylight. So I start screaming again. Oh, no. And then the footsteps disappear. I think they just <laughs> double back. Because imagine you're out in the wilderness by the Grand Canyon. <laughs> you're off on a trail. And then you just hear like rabid screaming. I think I was screaming the word Russia. It'll make sense in context, I promise. Wow. But you know, I'm out there screaming, Russia! No, but that's the thing. The footsteps fade. There's, the, there's nothing better than when you're like f truly alone in mm. like nature and you hear something really weird, like someone you screaming. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, okay. like, like when I'm in downtown LA, I hear a scream. I'm like, eh. yeah. But you know, <laughs> in you the wilderness, alone. yeah. When you think you're alone in the wilderness and you hear a guy going, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, wow, like any <laughs> anything could happen right yeah. now. Like literally anything could happen. Uh, <clears throat> It's yeah. nice too because it's so big and it's obviously, you know, there's there's so much to cover that they don't even bother with barricades. You know what I mean? Like I'm so used to the Disneylandification of like America's monuments where you go there and it's like, oh, you can't go here, you can't go there. And then when you go to the Grand Canyon, it's just too big. So it just drops off all over the place. And you just kind of walk to the edge and you're like, all right, well, shoot. It's like, dang, it's up not, to me. Yeah, it's like they're like, build the wall on the Grand Canyon <laughs> so no one can Canyon. jump off or fall down. It's like, sir. You do realize how big the Grand Canyon is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's intense. Have you guys been? Nico, you haven't been, right? I haven't been. I've flown over it. I've looked at it at the window from the mm. airplane. It's pretty crazy, actually, when you get on a nice day and a nice like angle over it. Yeah, it's nuts. I think I was saying yesterday, I can't imagine being like a settler walking across the plains. Like, all right, just a little bit further. Other side is desert. Yeah. It'll probably be green. And you're just like, oh, this is weird. What's, what is this cliff I'm coming up to? And you're like, oh. Oh, this is just an impenetrable crack in the earth that stretches from <laughs> as far as I can see north to south. Yep. This is where we stop. <laughs> it's like, I guess I won't be going any further then. <laughs> I, it appears this is where the journey ends. <laughs> and it's crazy because most of it's covered by like tree line, basically. Mm. So you got trees, 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 and then just out of nowhere, it just boo, drops off. Oh, that's Man. the worst. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so the, the thing that me and Dean had to and Jordan had to keep reminding ourselves is like, look, when we're facing camera, don't forget what's behind you. Don't step backwards. Mm. And there were a few times where it's like, I got, I got really uncomfortable with Dean's motion. I was like, dude, walk slower. God. You have to walk slower. Because uh, 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 he's just like moving around, moving sandbags. Just the edge is right there. I'm like, come on. Come it's on. like the edge is like, what, probably 10, 15 feet away? Yeah. 20 feet? How far away were you? Oh, we were, I mean, we were pretty much right up on it. God, I'm just getting nervous. I know. It, and you forget oh, it's there. Because oh, oh. at a certain point, it starts to feel like a matte painting. <laughs> like it starts remember, to feel like it's not real. Do you remember that that rock called the Chief in Squamish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have nightmares every once in a while about what we did up there. <laughs> <laughs> when, we, when we did handstands on the edge of the cliff, we didn't actually do that. Oh, God. We just hiked up to it. We hiked up, but then everyone went on their tummies and we all scooted yeah. up. Scooted up to the edge and looked down. <laughs> Do you guys get the gut pull? And that thing was like <laughs> a little bit. That thing was I forget how many. It was like a thousand meters tall. It's pretty big. I mean that's dead. It's so. Yeah. Oh god! I feel like, like just thinking about it now, I'm getting anxiety. <laughs> oh god, that was so scary in retrospect and in the moment, not not much of it. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy though the the amount of people that we saw just going to the edge and like even stepping onto kind of like a beyond that area there's like mm. some offshoots mm. people just confidently stepping out there i i don't have that in me at all nope not at no all. Like, what if it collapses that's what i'm it's saying like dusty people are sand. so are so um confident yeah that they're not going to be the one to set it off when, and i'm just i'm always assuming it's rough i mean like that feeling of being on the edge of like that cliff like that when i was uh when i went to hawaii i went to the uh volcano like the big island went to the volcano park and there's a part where we just walk around like lava flats and we just ended up walking up to the dome of another tinier volcano and as we're getting closer, you can see like the full on crater straight down, like tube, you know, boolean cylinder from the center of the yeah, hill. Yeah. <laughs> and like 
yeah, as you start to see, like, I don't actually want to get any closer to the edge of that thing. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, like, what could collapse? I don't want to die in a volcano. <laughs> well, maybe I <laughs> that would be, do. That'd be might a way actually to go. be that might be a way to go, actually. <laughs> was it active? It wasn't active. What? No, it wasn't active. Oh, that so is I something I want to do. It'd be kind of lame, actually. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> died in a volcano. Didn't have lava in it. Mm. So it's kind just, of more just of a, a hill. <laughs> the hole in it. <laughs> that reminds me, actually, I went to uh, Costa Rica quite a few years back, and there's a hike you can do where you get to the top of a volcano, and the entire thing is a lake now. Oh, cool. And so you can literally just swim out to the middle of this volcano hole, mm. and you're looking around, and there's trees all around the perimeter. You're like, dude, I'm in the middle of a literal volcano lake. That's, uh -huh. what, That's it's what one of the crater coolest. lake is. You're just out there. That's cool. You just did I it. mean, sure, not a volcano anymore. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let me have this, you know? Yeah, you it, heard, feel, it feels real. Have you no, heard of Crater okay. Lake Park? I, 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 Jordan? It's warm water. Huh? Have you heard of Crater Lake Park? Uh, no. Oh, same thing in America, in Oregon. Oh, that's way closer. Lake on top of a... <laughs> Just drive there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dang, man. I, I would like to climb an active one just once. Just, just to feel it. Just once. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've seen lava. It was cool. Yeah, would, lava's cool. I would love to see lava. Me too. Yeah, I saw it squirting out into the ocean. <laughs> oh, yeah. And just immediately steaming. You're just like, <clears throat> boing, boing, boing. like that's crazy. Uh, true to life, emissive texture. Emissive texture, yeah. A true to life, emissive <laughs> texture. Yeah, lava. Lava, huh? Um, oh, yeah, I got to do that Sim City shirt. I keep forgetting about that. Oh, yeah. The Sims. Oh, this is, <laughs> I would, sure. I'd be first Sims. in line for that. No, no, no. Uh, well, no, should, is, what's funnier? Is it the Sims or Sim City? <laughs> I think the Sims. I think the Sims. The Sims. I mean, Sim City can be the follow up. Because I was looking at the original cover for the Sims, and it's like the perfect, like the original box art for the Sims game is kind of the perfect design because it's like, uh, it's like this, you know? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have that it's the same. I mean, it would be like yeah. a more stylized version where you're like, yeah, <laughs> the Sims, but it's like ex ex except, except for Sims, CG Sims, particle <laughs> Sims, cloth Sims. Yeah, it's cloth, <laughs> tornadoes, fire, water. It's so niche. I <laughs> love it. It's it's like no, but I need to make it look like a '90s shirt, where it's like the '90s yeah. versions of these simulations. So like, they're all like lots of triangles and shit, <laughs> lots of sprites. Yeah, I'd be so down. I would rock that all that, the time. That'd be a funny shirt. Uh, Chad, tell us if you would buy that shirt. Yeah. Yeah. The Sims. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing focus group market <laughs> research right now. Well, the problem is, is that each time we talk about it on the React show, it's like, you know, hey, check out this Sim. And I literally, in my mind, I finish it and I say Sim City. <laughs> <laughs> I say Sim City in my head each time I hear, this is a great Sim. Sim yeah. City. It's it. And like, look at all these Sims. We're in Sim City. I love that we get. I, I love that we get uh, C Dub going. I, I would buy so fast. Immediately met by James going. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> just, That's okay. It's a polarizing shirt. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. It's a very yeah. <laughs> James, then let us know what you would wear, <laughs> and we'll make a. Uh, I mean, we can do a, a one off for you. A one off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just make it. We'll just make you. We'll just make you a shirt. <laughs> Did you guys ever do? I played Sim Tower actually. Sim Tower, you had to really manage your elevators. Sim, it taught me a lot about Sim elevators. Tower. Yeah, that's Sim like Tower, a. I mean, I'm guessing like based on context. Simulator. Yeah, oh, that, okay. that was like yeah. the side profile mm -hmm. thing where you're building little rooms and stuff. On yeah, that. I only yeah. played it like twice. Skyscraper Simulator. Yeah, that's so odd. What do you or, do? You well, it's, you manage manage a skyscraper. You have to like rent out the floors. Instead you have to build your elevators. <laughs> like. Because the elevators can't just go from top to bottom in one go. Yeah. You, have to, you have to section them out and you have to do it efficiently so that you can have other elevators. I it's love really it. just a lot of elevators. <laughs> I love the gamification of real full time jobs. <laughs> well, that's what Maxis was doing, man. Sim Earth. Did you ever play Sim Earth? No. Sim Earth was pretty nuts. Oh, man. And someone's dropping Sim Ant in the yeah, chat. Yeah, there's Sim Ant. What the Sim heck? Ant. Sim Ant you, is exactly what it sounds like. From what? the creators of The Sims. Mm -hmm. One Pre game. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. I mean, when The Sims came out, Maxis was kind of a former shell of what it was mm. already, but. Yeah, no, but they're, they're, they're banging them out. They're like Sim yeah. City's a hit. Sim we farm, can, we Sim can Town, Sim everything, dude. Not, but <laughs> Sim Racer though. No, Sim Racer. Streets of Sim City. Streets of Sim City. And Sim Copter and Sim City 2000 what triple pack, the dude. In the Scholastic magazine. Yeah, the Sim Copter. Oh. Sim Copter was pretty sick, actually. I had a joystick and I was awesome. playing that. Are you guys making but, this up? But street, no, no. no. Sim Sim Copter streets, is amazing. What is going on? Streets of Sim City. <laughs> burned me and i really ticked really? me off because it didn't work for you i was getting so excited to play sim streets of sim city i was like i love cars i love racing games. You to search your i love sim games. city yeah um and 
I got Sim Streets of Sim City running. And th th if if you're not familiar, the big promise was you can take your Sim City 2000 city, yeah, and load it into Streets of Sim City, and then <sighs> ra have races in your city. And the game was bugged or something, and it never would actually oh, load my map. It worked for me. Oh, shoot. It, it was your computer, Sam, dude. Don't you also remember you could load it into SimCopter as well and do what? missions? And I save didn't people. know that. What is going yeah, on? you can load your cities from SimCity 2000 into Streets of SimCity and SimCopter. Sim and I did it. And Sim I Copter drove on my roads Dude, there was that I rope had physics. sculpted myself. Did you remember, do you remember the rope <sighs> physics in SimCopter? You can drop <sighs> yeah. these ropes down. There's a guy on a burning building. And he's like, man, he's like two pixels. Yep. And then you fly your copter over. <laughs> rope goes down. Yeah. It's, it's so pretty cool. crazy how video games peaked in <laughs> back in the Damn, everyone says it loads their maps perfectly. I was so, yeah, I, I was just like, it was one of those things that always burned me because I was just like so excited and like, maybe I was just dumb. Yeah, maybe, it's your computer. Maybe, my, maybe my low IQ. Maybe it's the first time in my low IQ. No, and you could do car combat, man. Look, may, maybe it was because it was pirated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who, we'll never know. <laughs> this is wild to me. I thought it was honestly just The Sims and Sim City. No, that's where my knowledge. There's ended. a huge lineage of like Sim Copter sounds. Sim Copter made, was so made sweet. up though. It was amazing. No, because they made Sim City. And they realized they had a smash hit, and they're like, "Guys, sim everything, sim universe." And then they 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 did it. And it they, actually it worked out. They did have sm smash. They hits. were before Marvel. They were making bank on all these sim games. That's insane. It's like, you know, everyone thinks farming simulator is cool and stuff. They're like, "Oh, we put simulator at the end." It's like, no, you put sim at the front. Oof. <laughs> sim. That's how, you get, that's how you got a good game. Well, there's flight simulator too that I'm familiar with, which is like what the entire world. Do they use like Google Earth or whatever? Uh, yeah. my Bing Earth. Look at SimCopter. Bing here. Earth? This is this is SimCopter right here. That's that is insane. You'd be flying in your in your cities that you built yourself. What year was this, dude? Sim, uh, I think this is my abandoned where by the way. Ninety six. Ninety six. Goodness gracious! I'm so happy I figured out the virtual machine stuff because I can run anything. Oh now. really? Like you can because you can go to these abandoned where sites and just download this crap and it works perfectly. Virtual machine? Are you running like a Windows, DOS, Mac? Because actually, I want to set up like a basic computer for my kids. Right now, it's just like a like uh, emulates back then. It's times. like a, I know it's it's, it's like. Children, trust me, these games from 30 years ago are better than anything else out today. Well, at least the software's not trying to like get them addicted yeah. to gambling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's such know. a strong counter. <laughs> no, it is. It's back when games are a little more pure, you know? Yeah. Dang, man. All this is doing is unlocking the memories of my computer being so bad that none of these games worked well. That's actually pretty accurate. Yeah, I remember buying Rome Total War and I was <laughs> oh, no. so excited, dude. I was like, full armies? Back when you just didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. So I loaded it into my, you know, little disc reader and it popped up and I dude, the opening animatic or whatever. I wasn't even getting a frame a second on that. Mm. I'm like, I have no hope. Yeah. So it just sat there and, and gathered dust for years. Yeah. 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 Devastating memories. Yeah. I pushed my Macintosh Performa as far as it would go. Yeah. <laughs> Simcopter was as far as it could go. <laughs> no, that was actually my PC by then. <sighs> Some copy. Yeah, man. These All right, I'm gonna do know. that. Yeah, uh, I think what's it's called VMware or something. VMware, I think, is the software oh. I was using. You guys also know that like Roller Coaster Tycoon was coded in the, in assembly. This guy mentioned it here in the uh, Jimothy. <laughs> but yeah, it was assembly? like Roller Coaster Tycoon ran so smooth on old computers, way smoother than any other game because the guy just like coded it in like raw native oh, machine it? language. It's pretty crazy. That yeah. is crazy. Virtual Without virtual box. box, yeah, virtual box. That's I need to play. I need to play some old Macintosh games. Yeah. So virtual box. I wonder if that would do it. Virtual box. Uh, it's not running the old Mac stuff, mm. but it runs the old Windows stuff. Fine. Do you guys I, still enjoy I, playing those old games though? Uh, it's more than I want to fire up Kid Picks for my kids. So, mm. so that's the thing. Technically, there is a version of Kid Picks that works on Windows machines, and I have. I, I found it. Oh yeah. It's 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 one of the abandoned more ones, but it's the last version of Kid Picks that like actually works. Um and. It doesn't, it does have the bomb. It does have the bomb. Okay, good. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that was the end. It's like once Kid Picks took the bomb, do you know what I'm talking about? I'm not familiar with so, the bomb. So in Kid Picks, you know, it's Kid Picks was like <laughs> I don't even a, know what a, a kid's is. illustration software. It's, it's, kids, it's like kids introduction to Photoshop before Photoshop was even So really you have brushes. Oh, that's fun. You got yeah. stamps. You can put little moving like icons on your picture. You can do crazy gradients and effects. 
But then when you're all done, there's a bomb. You drag out a little stick of dynamite and you drop it in your scene and you let it go and it goes <laughs> and the fuse goes down. Boom! The whole picture, crazy, crazy inverted colors, blah, 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 and it disappears. And it was so sick. Yeah, and that's um, how you erase your picture. That, that's why how you is that it. not a thing? <laughs> that's crazy. That yeah. needs to be in every single yeah. Yeah, man. software. I said software peaked in 1996. They, they, they <laughs> updated it to a cartoon, like those spherical bombs. Those what I don't know what that kind of bomb is called specifically. Yeah, those are weird little pirate round bombs. cartoony bomb with the Yeah, fuse. the Looney Tune. Yeah, yeah, and then I guess basically after that version of the kid picks, they were just like, no. Oh my god. It's and then in a post 9 11 world, they took the bomb out. That wasn't even bomb related. It's a suicide. You bring out a tiny suicide bomber, <laughs> <laughs> and he screams and then explodes. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. but but yeah, it's crazy okay. they took that out of kid picks. Yeah. <laughs> then bomb, yeah. To, Looney Tunes bombs are not offensive. Looney Tunes bombs are not. No. offensive. my hot take. Yeah. Any round bombs are not offensive. Round Kids bombs are not offensive with a long so tether that you like. Yeah, it's basically a, it's like a it's like a primitive grenade. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm. those were the days. Now. Yeah, yeah, it's very are, good. Are but there yeah, no, any you can like it. art programs like that for kids these days? Like, because the thing is, like, kids are like basically on iPads now, you know. But the mm-hmm. problem is, like, the vast majority of oh, apps. He, yo, on Morgan iPad. got the bombs. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah? Sweet. Oh, first grade 20, 2004. All right. All right. Oh yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but you're no kid. Yeah. No, that's a thing. That's a thing. I think about that a lot. Uh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I love that. I don't. I mean, I, I, you know, the kids. My kids like procreate, but it's also one of those. Uh oh, you get trapped in a menu, and it's like help. You yeah, know, I, it's oh, a lot crap. of reading. You know, that's that's not straightforward. But and like, like, and like yeah. all their kids' games are either like free to play, which you already know what that means. Mm-hmm. Once it's like get is the download buzz. Like, oh, this is gonna just like mess with my kids. It's gonna try to get me to download stuff. It's gonna like, you know tease you with all the little things you want like i don't i just want a full pa- like complete package software yeah. it's just it's just it's 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 like it's a uh, lawful good it just sits there and it does good things that's all it does mm-hmm. you know yeah. i don't yeah. want to like pick at me and then like yeah it's just it's so hard to find that stuff like, i mean they don't the i mean iPad. there is technically a kid picks that's out there for like ipad but i don't know what it, I, th- I don't think it's like the real version and I don't yeah know, so. it's not yeah. pure it's not pure i need that i need i need the software itself to be as innocent as my children yeah you know? yeah yeah it's just not the case <laughs> yeah yeah never used it i think you could throw your kids at uh houdini though <laughs> <laughs> yeah honestly once you understand houdini though it makes the most sense out of all the softwares i've used it's mm. just yeah it's it doesn't hold your hand very much at all mm-hmm. that's the thing see if you're learning unreal i i'm always enticed i i suffer from shiny coin syndrome all the time where i'm looking around like what blender can do and how fast you can move and then i look at unreal and what sam does but Unreal is like you need to you need to memorize paths to so many buttons. It feels like to to be able to operate and like Houdini. The advantage there is the same fundamentals apply to almost everything that you're doing. So if you understand the building blocks, you can kind of build your own path there. Whereas if you don't remember where the button is, I don't know. Sam, am I wrong about that? Where it's yes. like menus and menus and menus and menus. Well, like the thing with Unreal that makes it complicated and hard to use is that depending on the specific task or feature you're trying to do. Um, you have to basically set up your project file with the correct plugins and all the tools that mm-hmm. you want to have. And the, you know, so, so basically let's say you're wanting to do like the, you know, 3d animation of like characters and environments, for instance, there's a bunch of like plugins and stuff that are not default turned on in your application that you have to turn on every time you start a new file. Then on top of that, a lot of these features that you see, such as like, the IK like control rigs. You remember seeing some of those stuff where you see like, yeah, you got the little handles around the hands and wrists and arms. That's not even a plugin. That is like a feature in the software that if you want those, you need to find a project file that has them and transfer them into your project file. Mm-hmm. So like you can technically like build them from scratch in a project file, but half the stuff that you're using is already like a pre-made blueprint or some sort of asset that's just like in a different project file. So it's like, if I was gonna make a new project with like characters and some animation, the first thing I would do is I would go to the last project I used for that kind of stuff and transfer a bunch of crap over into the file and then I would start working on it. And so that's the thing, that's the slow, that's the slow part. Cause that means instead of just opening Unreal and start wor- working, you open Unreal, you make a project file, 
you close the project file, <laughs> you go to the old project file, you transfer all your stuff back to the new project mm -hmm. file, and then you open the new project file, and then you start working. It's not just like, a, oh, it's in that menu. It's like, no, it's literally in this giant project file, so you have to wait until 10 gigabytes transfers from one to the next, <laughs> and then you can work. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. Man. But that's the problem. It's, it's also a soft software that's made for everything, you know? That, so. But I feel like all softwares are heading that direction. You uh, yeah like it fit like you know Houdini is putting a ton of focus in their compositing, yeah too like material building too like mm -hmm. substance painter style where you build texture but it's all like taking place in the same exact software. Yep. It's like Blender does the same thing, Unreal obviously is doing the same thing, and then Resolve you know yeah like Fusion and well you know this circles back to the stuff we talked about with Claude at the beginning of this conversation. I I'm seeing a trend here where we're moving to a post software world. Don't say that. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Put too many, too many points in Houdini. <laughs> so it's first gonna start with the post coding language world, which we're approaching right now. So you can basically code things in English now, right? Because Claude or ChatGPT will just turn your English into whatever, pretty much whatever script or coding language you want to turn it into. And if it's making mistakes, if you just get really explicit with your English, it can more or less figure out what you're trying to do, including detailed stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know, like when you're coding, there's you know a thing called pseudocode, which is just basically an English language logic structure of your program. And these LMs can turn that into code really easily. So first thing that's going to happen is we're entering a post-code world where everybody can code. And now you're seeing Sam coding things and me coding things. And you'll be coding things too. Mm. You'll be making Houdini scripts maybe this afternoon. Just yeah. like this, you know? <laughs> Hopefully. And little by little, everybody's going to learn and become aware that they can do that. And it's totally going to change how software is made. But then if it becomes easier and easier to code stuff, and you can just ask for more and more things to be automatically coded. Eventually, you're just going to approach your computer and be like, I need to do some image editing. I need a paintbrush and a clone tool. And I need some resize tools. And it's just going to give you the tools every time you ask for it because it's just going to code them right there live. Coding tools live would be sick. But, you know, if the entire thing was just reduced to code, it, like it's like people play Minecraft specifically to build. Like, that's why I use Houdini. No, no, but like when you interface with your computer, like if you need features from your program. Yeah. Like, that would be just like you're already seeing it as programs are packing more and more features into the single program. I think that's the way to. I think Eventually, that's really it'll all just be it's one like, program. Uh, yeah, I think it's like. I mean, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But I mean, at the, the mono the, program, <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. I mean, that's kind of like GitHub is in a way. You, that know? Would, you just like load up different Python files. You're that's just, true. But I guess there's yeah. there's also so much that you probably aren't even aware that you do need. So you'd have to be so hyper specific with what you're building, whereas like the the softwares that exist right now have that infrastructure in place yeah. where it takes care of a lot of it for you. And you're like, oh, I need a paintbrush. Well, what is that paintbrush doing? What is it controlling under the hood, and what is that being driven? By? So you kind of First need to say, be able to explain. Give, give me a general painting program with with practical physical physics for all the paint. It goes okay, and you get uh, that. You're like, okay, maybe cool. you're right. And a cool palette thing. It's like, here, I don't like that idea. Give me a different idea. Okay, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> what do other people like? Here, I'll just give you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, the, yeah, I can see that. I mean, that's the big thing, though, is like on the short term, it's like really just a feature thing. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I wish this had a feature to do this. And it's like, well, you can, now you can just ask for it. Yeah. yeah it's pretty great. Um, so, although, so, although I've noticed it's always like it's the basic, the, the most rudimentary version still. Well, yeah, yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. obviously, like we're in the first year of this. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't want it to be a thing where it's like, um, you know how rich kids don't appreciate anything? Uh, it's too late, <laughs> you know man. What I mean? You know what I mean? Like, there's something to earn in it. Like, when I build something that works, it feels so good. It's like, that's what it's about to me. It's like, the building. And I'm like, look at this. Yeah. And if that's, if that's just reduced to... I mean, not that this is going to change anything. I'm just saying, outwardly, I'm like, I hope it doesn't get reduced to that. Regardless, I'll still no, do no, what no, I do. No, 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 it I'm doesn't. Like, Think about a surgeon. When they, they, they hold out their hand and say, scalpel. <laughs> and one of the assistants... <laughs> puts the scalpel in their hand. It doesn't diminish the mm. quality of work that the surgeon's doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless they say, hey, Claude. Hey, operate. Claude. <laughs> where am I, uh, you know, trying to put this thing? Where, yeah. where stick it in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not, like, yeah, there's color that. by numbers approach. There's that. There's that version, but there's the whole, like, I have a vision and I know what my end goal is and what I'm trying to accomplish here. And I have, like, a rudimentary understanding yeah. of how I'm operating here, but I want... I mean, that's something the reality or of someone what, else yeah. to help give me the building blocks yeah. that I need. Like I have the vision of the blueprint and I need to fill these in with different elements here. And that's where the, that the AI stuff comes in. And handy. realistically, at the end of the day, that's how things <clears throat> I feel like. That's why people use anything. It's because somebody actually wants to do something. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, then this, and then like, and it's the, yeah. this is the classic thing. This is the classic distinction of like when people are like, ah, 
<laughs> the AI. It's like, yeah, obviously it's taking some of these simple tasks and, you know, taking that away. But like, like that's the, that's, that's the empowering part. You know, it's like the whole, like, it's the same thing with, you know, the anime stuff we were doing last yeah, it's year. It's empowering. It's like, <laughs> that's, the whole, that's what like, empowering oh, we're is. We're still putting a shit of work here. Of like, <laughs> planning us out and shooting things and storyboarding and all the acting yeah. and the audio and the music and the vfx and stuff it's just like but this one specific task you know you know give us a hand with that yeah yep a yeah tool, tool building would be especially cool that yeah. would be really handy yeah because cool. all the time i'm like oh i really wish they had this yeah or there's a mention in the chat of how like you know a lot of visual effects studios have custom software for all their things at this point it's like it'll just be like yeah. that for everybody yeah you know it's cool one yeah. hub to control them all <laughs> <laughs> one hub to control them all <laughs> yeah that's pretty sweet that's pretty sweet and it's like it's and it's good also it's like it's it's really a thing where it's like it's it's great in those like non-creative tasks in a way yeah not to say there's well, like you know for the anime stuff there is obviously a huge art with like the line work and coloring and stuff like that but truly like i've used uh claude and stuff to create some like audio plugins and stuff and they're pretty bad you know, it's it's one of those things where you're like, oh, I hey, make like an overdrive thing for guitar, and like it will make it, and it's it's driven, but it kind of sounds like t total crap, so to mm. speak. You know, <laughs> and, and I think it's because I'm you know I'm giving it too much of a creative task, like make this sound <laughs> nice, like you know, it's like no, like I need something functional, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. that's I think that the, the other distinction right now. Yeah, like, it's, it's it's the <laughs> this is this is not a, this is not fair to George Lucas. What's the George Lucas effect, right? Like yeah. Star Wars: Phantom Menace. Like I'll just everybody else knows what they're doing. I'll just let them make the movie, and I'll sit back. And it's like, oh, this is just a loose collection of like random hallucinations. As opposed, to, like I'm going to direct mm. this thing and use each person you know as what? an extension of like execution. I think he did. I think he did. He did that, actually. That is his family. true vision. That I was actually his agree true vision. I think. Uh, didn't he want? I think that's he say it's, it's lore children? or legend that he just stood back. But, oh, yeah. is that is that what people say that he did? You know, he's like, oh, just George Lucas stood back and let the actors just decide what they should do. And I just love but, that it's aging so well. <laughs> like the prequels, it has aged so <laughs> well. Aged like so I see well. these dang Star Wars shows out, and I'm like, like they are so janky compared to like the prequels. I feel like the prequels were like it's like direct. And it, and it never felt like it was breaking the fourth wall. Like all the new Disney ones are like, I feel like it's fourth wall breaking either with like the writing or stuff like that. It's yeah. just, it's just like, wait, hold on, hold on. You're, and... like, you're like way too aware that you're trying to write Star Wars. I don't know. Super weird. Anyways. Well, well, that's your monthly Star, Star Wars, Wars dunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we have a whole Acolyte React episode coming out. Dunking on the sabers. Oh, you guys. Oh, nice. Yeah. Heck yeah. I haven't seen the show. I did see some uh, screen capping of some of those scenes, sucks balls. too. Is it? It's <laughs> it's really sucks balls. <laughs> it's bad. It's so bad. It's rough. It's, it's uh, like there's no fun left in Star Wars. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's Anyways, the same thing as playing games on your mobile phone, right? It's yeah. like it's not there to just be a pure game. Star Wars isn't there just to be a pure fun story anymore. It's there's like there's so many auxiliary motivations and mm. just I can't. Can't I'm too I'm too aware of it. Like I'm way too aware of like all the different like marketing and corporate strategy happening around like every Star Wars product coming out. It's just like Ugh. you can just imagine <laughs> them all behind the monitor. Yeah, you know every take. Oh man, yeah, this I can't good. handle it. No, well, it's, it's this crossover <laughs> where like companies create content to make themselves look good. You know, rather you know, it's like no, we're a good company. Didn't you see Star Wars? It's all about how good we are as Disney, you know, <laughs> like that's the messaging I get. You know, they're like, look, it's we have a diverse casts and we have a storyline that's very empowering for these different groups of people that are that once again are historically under. It's like, I know, I know, <laughs> I know that's a real world problem that we all want to solve. But this is fucking <laughs> fiction, please. Just like write me a please, like stop it. Like if I want this, I'll watch cnn or i'll watch a talk show i'll listen to a podcast about america you know like that's where i get that stuff because that's real you know and star wars is not real yeah don't make it like that you know you know that's so funny no nah, i don't know that's like my bad take on it but it's just it's just it's the reminder you know it's like you're just like ah, like you can't escape this yeah yeah and there's plenty more coming i feel yeah. like I know. <laughs> <laughs> the side. Yes. <laughs> the, anyways, so the, point is, the point is, the point is, the point is, though, next week, I know, sorry, the quarter cast 
is the AI cast lately? Because there's, <laughs> it's, a whole, there's always been the Futurology cast, my man. The Futurology cast. But yeah. like, uh, there's a whole other thing I want to talk about. Okay, um, we have like six minutes. We're not going to talk about it today. But it is <laughs> it is the post social media era that oh, we, yes. we really brought up the post social media oh, yes. era, and I think it's it's a really fun deep dive. I would love to talk about it, but I it, it's it seems increasingly real. Yeah, these days with like effectively, and I'm not going to get into it too deep. But as a in a nutshell, the Google Pixel phones are basically integrating an actual like AI imaging feature, so you can take a picture and then tweak the picture using AI right there before it goes. To to your friends or to social media or anything like that and it's freaky because it's like uh oh hold on if if we're if we're taking the like the bar of entry to like doctoring your photos to the moment anyone with who has a smartphone takes it it's like it opens this world of now okay hold on what is real on the internet anymore mm. like is there anything real that you can garner from social media at this point and it, between everything we've seen with what happened on, on to Twitter now over the last year or two, and now this potential, which is going to affect basically all of TikTok and all of Instagram and all that stuff. It's kind of like, OK, like, what's the point mm. in using these services from a, uh, a checking in with people on a social level? Right. Because like uh, I just yeah, it's 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 pretty intense. Um yeah, so we'll talk about that more next time because there, there's some deep questions. There are some deep ass questions. And I always follow it up with the uh... dead <clears throat> internet theory. That is it. It's that's a phrase that I honestly didn't know about in, in, for a few, I guess maybe a month or two. I think Kyle Hill made a video about the yeah. Dead so it's just theory. it's the internet talking to itself. Yeah, yeah. Content yeah. for oh, robots. Oh, that's cool. It's content for the yeah for bots basically, or yeah. bots making content for other bots. But that's just I mean the dead internet's just a an artifact of Google's economic impact on the internet and then Google's function to the internet being contaminated by that economic impact. And that's led to the dead internet where you have content being generated for content's sake because content yeah. makes money. Yeah. But that's once again, that's only a byproduct of this weird inflection of technology we have right now. It's, it will go away as soon as Google's economic uh, incentive goes away to do it, which it will. So, you know, I give it a few more years. It's going to completely shift because there's going to be no reason to make content farms. Why would you? Mm. You know, nobody's visiting your web page to answer a question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty uh, intense. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. We'll see what happens with YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, well, videos is still once all. again, a video I'll just is, text my videos to everybody. Video <laughs> is still a place where, you know, you can. That's true. There's just, authenticity. Well, yeah, there is. Then again, again, a topic for another day, but that video you showed us. What's his name? Um, the what's his name? He's uh, from USC. The guy who was giving the three hour lecture. Oh. Do you remember his name off the top of your head? Alan Egon <laughs> Chalkion or Ch something Ch like Ch that. Ch Chalkion. Oh, the deep fake. Yes. Suspe suspected deep fake. The suspected deep fake. I, I really, man. Uh, it's too scary to think about. I, because I've looked, I've looked at it pretty closely, Sam. I have my thoughts. We'll talk about this. Might not be. I'm saying Google we'll it. See. It might not we'll be, see. but. but but how are these videos four hours long? That's a good question. Yeah, we're gonna have to how is he deep speaking dive. for four hours? In fact, I even took some of his text. This is a thing. We'll, we'll, it's called the Earth <laughs> Earth Save Science Collective. Uh, I'm pretty sure this, it's like a it's a Russian like psyop <laughs> <laughs> that is because no, it's a doomsday cult. It's a doomsday cult. They're like literally saying the Earth is gonna blow up. Oh man! And this guy's been posting videos. This scientist, and they're all like. Some of the videos are a couple hours long and he just talks for four hours. And like I've been taking the text and I'm just like, I'm just curious. So I take huge blocks of it and I throw it in a quad or chat GPT. I'm like pros and cons, just a huge wall of text. Tell me, what do you think this is AI or human writing? And it's been breaking it out. And it's like, oh, that's cool. it's, it's wow. I think there's actually some cases actually of like whether or not like the video is AI generated or the text is like there's definitely this le this creepy level of manipulation that I can't quite put my finger on yet, and I really am curious as to the oh, origin man. of this mystery. I, I didn't know you this. were investigating so thoroughly. This is exciting. Yeah, oh, this I just can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I just it's can't so stop thinking eerie. about it. The idea that the Earth might explode. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a four hour video of this guy talking. He almost never moves his lower, like his his upper body, neck down, but it looks like the face 
changing and like the neck changing. I want to call it animation looks amazing. <laughs> uh, and his hands will occasionally change position. But again, we're talking four hours long. Well, and these videos almost are super perfect long. posture. Yeah, super duper long. Yeah, he's like an old guy. And like and, he's and, an and the guy. actual words that he's saying are total gibberish. Granted, it's if if it's on a teleprompter, of course. But I and there is some of that teleprompter uh um what do you call it? Teleprompter uh 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 cadence where you would you read a sentence and as you're reading it, you read the next sentence with a slight pause because you have to switch your eyes down to the next. Mm -hmm. That could also be a model thing too, potentially something that's being tried. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I need. There's a lot of signs that point to something creepy going on here. <laughs> and with that mysterious, yes, little bit, I guess we will wrap up this podcast. Uh, to all of you on YouTube, thank you so much for listening and joining us, or Spotify, yeah. or wherever else you're listening to this podcast. Crazy stuff. Yeah, we got some crazy stuff to talk about next week. <laughs> yeah. uh, feel free to come join us live on CorridorDigital.com or on the Corridor app on your phone or iPad or TV, even I guess. Yeah, um, I don't know if you can chat with that one. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But uh, you can watch our videos. Anyways, uh, we're going to hang out and do a little live hangout with the uh, Corridor Digital audience here for a little while. Um, so, so long, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.